Good morning from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This morning we are at Pier 66 Sea Dock. My name is Ryan Alexander. And I'm David Johnson. David and I have the opportunity to show you around what is, in my opinion, the coolest 30 meter boat that I've ever shot. At 102 feet, the Alpha Spritz is a show stealer. And I can assure you what you see on this boat in terms of layout, in terms of volume, you have not seen on another yacht. And that's just part of what makes uh, this boat stand out is the imagination, the creativity that it takes to get all of these things in the right place. She's got a shallow draft of five feet, four inches, and an industry leading beam of 26 feet, seven inches. Uh, really, truly is amazing. And that beam is felt throughout the whole boat when you're walking around. A couple of really interesting numbers there are the shallow draft, which will allow you to cruise all the anchorages and get into all the marinas and in locations like the Bahamas. And the beam is really, truly impressive. Just allows you to get a lot more volume into a 102 foot boat than you will from any other shipyards that are currently building at this size. I noticed the second that you step inside, all the doorways seem to be wider, all the companionways and walkways, and the way that they're able to use glass to encircle all these spaces, I mean, there really is nothing I've ever seen like this. There's not, as far as the beam goes, and that's where you're feeling all this additional space. Closest competitors are the, you know, the 131 Princess, the 131 Sunseeker, and 132 Benetti. And actually, the volume is, is about the same in those boats. You and I both agree that the coolest exterior space is found at the stern. Absolutely. Got a nice hot tub back there, again, taking up that full beam. But we're going to end today's walkthrough taking a look at the interior. This boat is designed in a slightly different way, that you brought in a seasoned designer, Giorgio Cassetta, to do the, the actual layout of the interior. And then when it comes to the furniture selections, all of that was done in-house at Alpha in their yard in Turkey. Yep. The team at Alpha is very experienced with this, with the yacht ownership, and for this particular boat, they chose uh, Palo Lenti for all of the interior and exterior furniture. It's a very, very high-end furniture. There's a lot of design ideas that have been put into the construction of the boat, one of which is the comfort of the guests while they're on board the boat. Uh, and that usually is summed up by what is the volume of the noise from the vessel, whether that's the air conditioning or the engines or the generators. And the way that they do this is by using a series of rubber bushings and hanger brackets to suspend the ceiling and the floors from the hull. This is a way that has been very successful throughout the uh, build of many very nice pedigree super yachts around the world. All of these custom Alpha yachts will all have the same engineering applied to them and it'll only benefit the owners of these boats in the future. So now David and myself, we are going to stop talking about the boat. We are going to show you the boat inside and out, every space. We're going to get things kicked off on the swim platform, show you the massive flybridge overhead and end up down in the five guest staterooms that sleep a total of 12 guests. As we hinted at at the top of today's walkthrough, the space that stands out the most on hole number one of the Sprit series is the stern. It's in this area where we're going to get things going because this sets the bar for what you can expect throughout this Turkish built super yacht. First, I want to talk about the layout. You'll notice that this area is tiered, which gave the designers an interesting space to develop. This design is a personal favorite because it blurs the lines between yacht and villa. On the raised level, just out from underneath the aft deck hardtop, is a broad seating area with aft-facing deck furniture. Also note the teak decks that cover the entirety of the exterior. These come standard at 5 mm thick and 50 mm wide and have even hardier dimensions on the treads leading down to the next level where we find the end of the yacht that connects you with the water in more ways than one. This is what Alpha refers to as a plunge pool that has an upgraded mosaic tile design, underwater lights, and is both filtered and heated. A special design aspect is that it's built into the deck, leaving guests with an unobstructed view. Also found in this area are a pair of pop-up deck lights and oversized umbrellas. Five steps down from here is the swim platform. There are a few notable features in this area, 
such as this bench seat that folds down from the transom. This is a great place to sit when the kids are playing in the water. It's also long and comfortable enough for you to take a quick nap on. Another thing I love back here are the eight underwater LED lights that wrap around the stern. This goes well with the middle portion of the platform, which is hydraulic and serves as the place where you can store your tender or create your very own beach club. You know, normally when your tender is alongside the boat, you're making kind of a leap of faith right. to get onto the swim platform of your tender. These guys have come up with a brilliant idea where they've actually brought the teak around the side over where the exhaust comes out. From here, let's take a look at the mechanical space located just forward of a storage lazarette. The engine room is accessed on the port side of the boat and makes remarkably good use of the available space. This area is designed to be as practical as possible by offering good access on all sides of the major machinery. A couple of important factors in any engine room is the quality of all the engineering equipment that's around you. Uh, I would say ease of access to the items that you're going to be working on on a daily basis, uh, emergency items, you want to be able to get to everything quickly. You've got very reliable Caterpillar C12 engines, easy access to your generators, to your water maker, to all your breaker panels, all of your systems, water pumps, everything that you need is right here in this little space and it's easy to access. If this was a 20 four foot beam boat or a 23 foot beam, which is common in this size range, we would not have those large generators and all of these systems right here in this room. They would be tucked away underneath the garage somewhere, under the floorboards, but we've got it here, which is a uh, you know, brilliant uh, design aspect. Out in open water, Andrika cruises comfortably at around 15 knots and her top speed is just over 17 knots. When you drop down to a slower cruising speed of 10 knots, you see the efficiency jump and offer this 102 footer a range of just under 2,500 nautical miles. Wrapping up with the technical details, let's next jump up to the aft deck, which is located forward of the innovative beach club that we've already taken a look at. What jumps out at you at first in this area is how impressive the overhead is. Not only is it completely finished with teak, which helps wick away the moisture of this outdoor entertaining venue, but it also features AC vents, LED lighting, and a top-of-the-line sound system. Directly below this is 650 square feet of deck space that's a perfect complement to the beach club located aft and the salon found forward. This space is tied together with the help of a 12-person book-matched marble alfresco dining table found centerline. Working to serve both this dining table and the guest lounging in the aft, note that there's a wet bar over on the port side of the space. Here we see a sink and prep area along with a stainless ice box. Below the countertop is refrigeration and plenty of storage. Coming back to the fact that Alpha is a, a custom builder, um, I'd like to point out that there's, there's a, a wide variety of options that you can do in every area, but in this area specifically, uh, somebody may want to enclose this area completely. Uh, easily done by putting some Isinglass along the back wall there. And you can imagine how huge this space would be That's if right. you combined uh, the in inner salon with this. That's right, it's another option. You can, yeah. you can completely eliminate this, this glass wall right here and make this all one area if you chose to do so, but you really have a beautiful afresco dining area right here that I would be uh, uh, hesitant to eliminate. Before we take the side decks forward to the bow, let's head up a wide set of stairs on the starboard side that lead us to our next stop, the flybridge. Utilizing a footprint of about 860 square feet, the upper deck on the 102 Spritz is what super yacht dreams are made of, and the size of the space is just the beginning. For starters, we see the same teak finished overhead that we saw on the aft deck, covering the middle of the upper level. This helps create three distinct sections of the flybridge, and we'll start by breaking down the aft. 
Surrounding this area is a polished stainless safety rail that's been built to the highest quality standards that you'll find in class. The safety rail wraps around a great seating layout back here. This is where we find an L-shaped sofa that's part of a larger lounging area, a perfect place to relax with 10 to 12 guests on a sunny afternoon. Across from this is an on-deck shower column. This is just aft of one of my favorite guest features on this deck, a formal bar that extends towards the aft, allowing guests to sit facing each other. Usually on a yacht, you're gonna find that there's seating on one side. You might have four stools, even on a large yacht. So the designers decided to put stools on both sides and, and they aren't just little tiny swing out stools. Look at those stools there. They're, they're handcrafted out, out of teak. They're beautiful, they're comfortable. They're a stool you can sit on for an hour or two. Moving forward from here, we next step under the Alpha 102's stunning hardtop. Located centerline is the second 12-person alfresco dinette on board. Having two of these is something that makes the Spritz stand out amongst competitors. There's plenty of room to walk around on all sides, and there are also a pair of Sunbright TVs that flank the table to port and starboard. These tie in to an expansive direct TV setup, but can also be wired to your computer to display presentations when you have business meetings on board. Servicing the upper deck is a wet bar over on the port side. In addition to a sink, prep space, and an insulated stainless drink box, we also find that this area has a grill, a refrigerator, and a ton of useful storage. So this is actually really well thought out by the shipyard. They decided to put the helm here because it frees up all the space forward for the guests. An owner could get very creative with that area. By putting this helm here, it's on the port side. When the captain's maneuvering, he can easily look over the side of the boat and see where he's docking the boat. Yeah, so it serves as both a wing station and a helm, but you couldn't do any of those things like a hot tub or tender storage or any right. of that up here if you didn't have the helm right off here. to the port That's side. That's right. This is an area that when the guests are up here, the captain's probably going to be driving down on the lower helm anyway. So this was more of a station for docking uh, or when it's just a beautiful day and uh, the captain wants to get some fresh air, he can be here. But uh, traditionally, he's gonna be inside if the guests are dining or, or sun lounging up here. And in terms of the electronics found here, essentially everything here that you would find down at, at the main helm. Exactly, yeah, the, the Furuno screen is not the uh, same 19 inch screen, it's a little bit smaller screen, but you still have all the Caterpillar displays, engine controls, autopilot. Everything that you see downstairs is here. Uh, I'd also wanna point out that there's the option to incorporate video cameras in here on the starboard side so the captain can see the starboard side when he's maneuvering as well. As David was mentioning, the area forward of the helm can be completely customized on future builds. As you see it, there's a sunning and seating arrangement up here where you can easily entertain 10 or so guests in the open air. Wrapping up on the flybridge, our next stop is the bow, which can be accessed by way of side decks, port, and starboard. As David makes his way forward, note the height of the glass that separates him from the interior. This glass configuration is central to the look of the Alpha 102. Not only does it have the standard vertical windows, but there's also a piece of glass that serves as a return on top, giving the superstructure a futuristic look. This is seen on the main deck and the lower level. Another thing that I like about the side decks is the courtesy lighting that you can appreciate as the sun starts to set and the bow becomes a primary location for entertaining. Also note the heavy duty stainless and cleats that you pass on the way forward. Looking now at the foredeck itself, we're first gonna pause at the guest space. There are three main customizable layouts that you can choose from when designing this yacht from the ground up. The first configuration is as you see it. Here, you have a U-shaped settee with two high-low cocktail tables. This configuration gives you the option of adding umbrellas or a sunshade to cover the entire area. Your second option would turn this seating area into a massive storage space or you can pass on seating and storage and make this home to a pair of jet skis and a davit. The anchoring setup is forward of the seating area and benefits from the protection of high gunnels and overbuilt deck gear. 
On the spritz, the second windlass comes standard, which is something that Alpha does a lot on this boat. What other manufacturers have as options, Alpha builds into every 102. Not only are there heavy duty cleats and windlasses, but the fair leads are also substantial with a wide pass through that help you communicate with anyone on the dock as you're tying off. A personal favorite touch on Andrika is the boot stripe. This understated pop of color just above and below the waterline is a unique way to give the overall profile a bit of color without taking the attention away from the exterior lines. Wrapping up on the bow, our next stop is the Salon, where we'll begin the interior portion of today's walkthrough. Stepping inside through floor to ceiling glass doors, the Salon is where you start to see all of the benefits of her forward thinking layout. Windows surround the space on three sides and work together with a variety of luxury finishes, such as this horizontally arranged wood plank flooring. As David mentioned in today's intro, the salon, as well as the other interior spaces on board the 102, have floating floors, ceilings, and walls that make for a remarkably quiet ride. Over on the port side is a formal wet bar, perfect for nights when you're entertaining. Its central location and bold aesthetic offer the space a unique feel. Found in this area is an island bar top, sink, a wine cooler, and plenty of storage. Looking immediately forward of this, we see an intimate stone-topped table with four comfortable chairs next to the whole side windows to port. This is the perfect place to gather with friends and play cards over a bottle of wine. When you want to really slow down, the perfect place to do so is over on the starboard side of the salon. This is where we see a custom L-shaped sofa with an inspired design. The selection of furniture on board is likely to be one of the things that makes Andrika stand out upon boarding this yacht, but it's how noticeably homey it feels that takes it to the next level. Immediately aft of this is a spiral staircase leading down to the guest accommodations. We're gonna revisit this area in a few minutes. For the time being, we're gonna make our way forward of the salon and into the galley, which is accessed through an electric pocket door. Located on the starboard side, this chef's galley is loaded with reliable melee appliances and a U-shaped layout. For cooking, your chef has a cooktop and an oven on the aft side that's surrounded by countertop space. Looking outboard, we see a sink directly below a large window in the hull. Looking on the forward bulkhead, we see a microwave convection oven in the upper cabinets as well as a dishwasher below the countertops. Just inboard of this is a ton of refrigeration with floor to ceiling units on the forward and aft bulkheads. Stepping out of here and looking directly across the hall brings you to the main deck day head. The other feature that's located in this hallway is a commercial ice maker located just forward. Wrapping up in this area, our final stop on the main deck is the wheelhouse. So to me, this is an ideal proper wheelhouse. Everything that would lead you to believe that this is a 30 foot you know, long wheelhouse, but they moved the aft bulkhead forward. You still got a place to sit, uh, but the visibility out of the windows, it has the full wrapping, uh, ver vertical windows. I love the way this is, is laid out in here. Yeah, it's, it's really well laid out. The uh, shipyard and designers, Giorgio Cassetta, they, everybody put a lot of you know, forethought into this design of this, this bridge right here. Uh, you can see it's got a full Fruno nav net right here. Everything that you need is set up right in front of the captain, right at his hands. Vertical windows, as you mentioned, which are really important for long passages because you don't have the sun beating down into your eyes. It does take a lot of the, the stress off of the captain uh, if he's got one less concern. This isn't a raised pilot house, right. this is on the main deck. What's mm -hmm. the benefit of having this here on, on the main deck like this? Well, it's the, the captain's you know right centralized. He's next to everything. So the crew accommodations are directly below us. Uh, you've, got, you've got the foredeck right here in front of you, easy to monitor if you're doing any anchoring. Uh, any crew crew activities up on the foredeck. It's also really good visibility. And if he needs a better field of view than this, he can go up to the flybridge and drive from the helm up there. As I mentioned earlier, this yacht is set up with uh, the Furuno Navnet package. That includes two 19-inch monitors. Each Furuno monitor has its own unique control pad right here as well. 
below the 19 inch monitor, you've got your windshield wiper controls, searchlight controls, and your Kallenberg air horn controls. You've got your Mitsubishi stabilizer control panel, bow thruster control panel, Fruno autopilot, and your NFU steering control. Outboard of the ZF engine controls, you're gonna find your steering pump controls, your engine room ventilation controls, and then over here to the starboard, you're gonna have your full bow control center that's gonna show you your engine alarms, your fuel, your tankage, anything that you need to monitor on board the boat, you're gonna find right here. Two other areas that I'd like to point out here in the bridge are, uh, first area would be this really comfortable settee. This can be utilized by the crew when they're underway, if they're on watch, uh, but also more importantly, by, by the captain, when the owners are on board, he's got a place to sit down and work on his laptop and get some work done. Second area would be this, uh, this, this bank of uh, four breaker panels. These breakers are typically found at, in, in much harder to get to areas. It was really good that the engineers decided to put this here. Uh, it means that if there's an issue, they're gonna be able to deal with it immediately. And there's a secondary set of these also down in the engine room. There so is. there's some crossover there. There's some crossover, absolutely. You've got another whole bank down in the engine room as well. It's gonna take care of your shore power and a lot of the engine systems as well. In addition to the helm controls and other features David just ran us through, the wheelhouse also features an actuated pantograph door with access to the port side deck. This is right next to a set of stairs that leads down into the crew accommodations. Taking up 280 square feet, the crew quarters features a common area at the foot of the stairs and access to three cabins that can sleep a total of five. Found in this common area is a dinette and seating, as well as a kitchenette over on the port side. Additionally, there's a laundry station inboard with a separate washer and dryer. Wrapping up in here, the final spaces for us to check out are the guest accommodations, which are located on the lower deck and accessed by way of the spiral staircase in the salon that I pointed out earlier. We're first gonna take a look at the aft staterooms, starting on the starboard side. These aft guest rooms are mirrored and feature full-sized queen berths like you would find in your home. Like the rest of the interior spaces, these are also floating, so the noise threshold in here is incredibly low. Facing inboard in these aft cabins, we see the hanging storage that's offered by a pair of large lockers. One of the more inspiring aspects of all of these guest cabins are the large hull side windows that let you look out from just above the waterline. These constantly refresh each space with natural light and are even outfitted with blackout blinds, allowing you to make the most of a late start. Aft of each accommodation is a private ensuite head and shower. These feature floating vanities, stone countertops from Turkey, and windows in the shower stalls. Leaving the aft accommodations and heading forward, we next arrive at staterooms three and four, which have twin berth layouts. These beds are separated by a nightstand and feature reading lights, electrical outlets, and AC controls. Making it possible for you to bring two extra guests are the Pullman berths that are found in these two accommodations. Facing aft, you see the TVs belonging to these cabins as well as hanging lockers that are just part of the storage offered in these cabins. These hanging lockers are just one step outside of an ensuite head and shower. Our final stop on today's walkthrough is the master stateroom, which is the forwardmost cabin on the lower level. When you combine all of the guest accommodations and the owner's suite, you have a total footprint of 1,100 square feet to work with, and Alpha has maximized this area's potential. As you enter, you first pass a substantial desk with some shelves and built-in cabinet storage. This leads you into the living area, where we first see a California king-sized berth off to the port side. One of my favorite details in here is the brass metalwork found throughout that mirrors what I love so much about the metallic-toned bootstripe on the hull that I pointed out earlier. The layout in here is perfect for the full beam that it has to work with, meaning that you've not only got great spaces to relax, but also an impressive amount of storage, including a walk-in closet found at the foot of the bed. Looking over to the opposite side of the master is a perfect area for you to spend some time in the privacy of a luxurious seating area below a hull window. 
This is just a few feet away from the ensuite, which has his and hers faucets that share a large stone sink, and there's also an outboard glass shower stall. So one of the uh, benefits of this floating floor configuration is the uh, ability to use a, a very nice custom drain, such as this one down here. These drains are designed in such a way that they, they make it so that none of the odors from the bilge or the gray water tank are able to come back up through the drainage system of the boat and uh, it basically eliminates all odors. It's one of those small details that the owners of the shipyard have thought about when, when, when designing the boat. What's always stood out to me about boat building is the seemingly never ending list of details that differentiate one yacht from another. In this world, the list of distinctions between most yachts lies in the fit and finish. But with Alpha, the differences are found in almost every space. From the floating room design and beamy layout of the interior, to the massive, reoriented exterior deck spaces, there's nothing status quo about this 102. So there you have it, Motor Yacht Andrika, built by Alpha Yachts out of Turkey. If you have any questions about this particular boat, or if you'd like to see a spec sheet, or perhaps get on board and see her yourself in person, you can reach out to David and he'll set that up for you. And I'd like to point out that Dennis and Yachting are the brand managers for Alpha Yachts for the Alfresco and Spritz lines. If you have any questions at all, feel free to call me or Dennison directly. We can answer any questions that you have. See you next time.